Hi everyone. It's good to be in Pastor's place. He's not here, but uh, you know we love visiting Pastor's place because it's such a uh, welcome we get. But Danny and uh, David have done an awesome job with Tay and uh, Sh- uh, Shane. So Pastor, I can tell you that. So they welcome me in the same way. So it's great to see all of you here. Uh, I'm excited what God has put in my heart, and uh, I want to just start with a quick, uh, uh, you know, joke. You know, quite uh, funny. Uh, while I was uh, preparing for this message. Uh, you know, I wanted to start with that. So let's start with that. You know, this uh, story is about uh, two twins who were seven years old. And uh, they were very mischievous. mischievous. Uh, they were in all the troubles in their school. Anything missing, they were responsible for it. And uh, so, you know, the mother was very worried, uh, you know, and she heard that there was a preacher who was a very strict disciplinarian. So she thought, okay, let me take my children because, you know, they need some discipline. They need some, uh, you know, they need to be put in the right way. So, you know, so the mother took both the boys. They were twins and they were really naughty in school. Uh, So what happened was, uh, uh, so, you know, the uh, preacher said that I'm going to meet one at a time. I'll meet the first one boy because I'm not going to meet both of them together. So the first uh, son came in. And this pastor was a very huge pastor, so he was very intimidating. And uh, what happened was, uh, the first question the pastor asked him, or the preacher asked him, where is God? So that's the first question, where is God? This uh, kid, he was not interested in that question, and he looked all over the place, and uh, didn't want to answer the question. So the preacher again asked, where is God? This time in a louder voice. And this time, this guy got really scared, the son. And the, others, uh, the boy, the other boy was waiting outside and he didn't answer, but he was looking all over. So the third time he was even louder. Where is God? And this boy ran out of the room and hid in his closet. So his brother came back and said, why? Why did you run away? He says, uh, God is missing. And they, they think we are the ones who have uh, kidnapped him this time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, uh, you, know, you know, it's good to laugh. I felt like, you know, we, we as uh, children of God, as sons and daughters of God, we must laugh. You know, it's a gift from God to laugh, and uh, it's always great. And I want to thank uh, uh, Pastor Daniel and Pastor Victor for, and uh, Pastor Esther for giving me this chance in this series, as Pastor already uh, talked about uh, last week, about Pentecost and post-Pentecost, how the church was impacted by the events of Pentecost. And we're going to continue in this series. Uh, my uh, title of my, uh, you know, sermon or today is "I Win Souls." Uh, you know, it's it's a, a wonderful uh, topic because you know when I read the topic "I Win Soul," uh, Pastor had uh, you know said uh, he had put a few uh, t- uh, teachings together, and uh, he said these are the options you have, and I really it connected with me because it's really important, and I really enjoyed preparing this message. And, uh, you know, a few things that Lord told me, I hope uh, it encourages each one of us because uh, it is so important for us as the church, each individual person here sitting who is a believer, who has received Jesus as Lord and Savior, is uh, the church. You are the church. When we come together, you know, we come as a body of Christ. So it's, you have, you, each one of you is so important to God. And so it's so important for us when before we you know, as the first, you know, century church, post the Pentecost, how it impacted the world. Similarly, we need to renew and see what they did. And that's what I'm, I'm going to try to present today. And I hope it encourages you. So like Pastor shared last week, you know, when, uh, in the day of Pentecost, this is 50 days after Jesus was resu- resurrected. Pentecost means 50. Uh, you know, they all gathered together and the Holy Spirit fell and they started speaking in tongues, which is a powerful thing. You know, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that is one of the signs, receiving the gift of tongues. And, uh, we, you know, I believe that it is God's will that each one of us speaks in tongues. But another thing happened was that Peter, the apostle, what he did, if you read in Acts 2, uh, we saw that he stood up in boldness and started preaching. You know, he started preaching to the crowd who was there with boldness. And we're going to look at Acts 
uh, chapter 2, verses 36 and 39 initially. Uh, I'm just going to read. Uh, so, therefore, so Peter stood up and said, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assured, assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And 37 says, Now when the, they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? It is uh, quite amazing. You know, Peter is actually in the during the Pentecost, is telling these people after preaching the gospel, saying that Jesus came as a man, he was the son of God, he was crucified and he was resurrected after three days. What happened was the Holy Spirit was there and they were convicted. That's why it says, you know, it cut their heart. It cut the heart of the people as Jesus spoke. And he's telling the very people who, he's saying, you guys were the ones who put who crucified Jesus you are the ones he's pointing out to these people in boldness and what is their reaction these are the very people who chose Bar Barnabas before Jesus you know they had a choice they could choose Barnabas or 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 Jesus but they chose Barnabas these are the very people who spat who abused Jesus but because of the presence of the Holy Spirit they were, they knew the power of God is real. They experienced the power of God. They, they were so humble and they were ready to do anything. And Peter tells them, Acts uh, chapter 2, 38 and 30, he says that, then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar of as many as the Lord your God will call. It's amazing. Here Peter is telling them that, you know, you need, to, you need to be baptized. You need to renew your mind. You need to be, uh, you know, you need to, uh, you're, you have to be baptized in Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Now, the word remission is defined as cancellation of depth or penalty or charge. So here Peter is saying, so for the cancellation of your sin, for, uh, for for the charge or penalty of sin to be removed from your life, you have to accept Jesus. You have to repent. You have to change the way you think. Uh, repent, the word repent means metanoia. That means changing the way you think. And, 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 and Peter is clearly telling them that. And he says, it is promised to you and generations to come. What is promised? Once you receive Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is promised. That's what he's saying here. He's saying, for the promise is to you and to your children. So if we've received Jesus Christ, the promise is for us to receive the Holy Spirit, to be baptized by the Holy Spirit, you know, and we can see what happens. All of them who were gathered that day received Jesus gladly. It says in verse 42, then those who gladly received his word were baptized and the day about 3000 souls were added to them. That was the start of the church movement that we see today. You know, it started on the day of Pentecost. 3,000 were added on the day of Pentecost. So amazing. You know, 3,000 people's eternal destiny changed that day. They were going from hell to heaven. You know, in this world, we live 70, 90, 100 years. But for eternity, when our destiny changes, it changes things. And each one of us, we might be going through a lot right now, but our eternity is secured in Jesus Christ. And these 3,000 had their eternity secured in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So amazing. And we learned that, uh, you know, is that when Peter was baptized by the Holy Spirit, what happened? Boldness came into him. Remember, this is the same Peter two months ago denied Jesus three times. This is the same Peter who was hiding after the crucifixion of Jesus. This is the same Peter who went back to his old profession of fishing. But today, because the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he had the power, he had the boldness to stand up and preach and even accuse the very people who crucified Jesus and convert and, and tell them the truth that they need to receive Jesus. They need to repent. They need to be baptized and they will receive the Holy Spirit. They will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and it will change their lives. Hallelujah. You know, because once 
because because once we are baptized by the Holy Spirit, we receive boldness. So each one of us who has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we receive boldness. You know, Second Timothy uh, chapter one verse seven, Paul writes that for God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but the power, love, and self discipline. Hallelujah. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, when we receive it, when we are baptized, we receive power, we receive love, we receive boldness. And that boldness only comes from the Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage you, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you know that one of the signs is that you are bold, you're not ashamed of the gospel. And this, what happened, this led to the first church movement, as we know, and we see throughout the book of Acts, we can see. I want to talk about another uh, you know, incident that happened in Acts. Uh, this says, Continu continually daily with one accord in the temple, they started breaking bread. From house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. And 47 says, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily to those who were being saved. So people were being added to the church post-Pentecost every day because they were operating in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. It, there's a ministry of the Holy Spirit. He ministers to us. He serves us like Jesus. There was a ministry of Jesus. Similarly, right now we're in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that's how people were added to the church. You know, it started on the day of Pentecost and every day they were added. And we can see in uh, the book of Acts in chapter 10 also, this wonderful story of the first Gentile being saved. You know, the name of, uh, his name was Cornelius. He was a Roman soldier. Uh, and he was a centurion, actually, sorry. He was a centurion, yes, living in Caesarea. He was a man who was just, the Bible says, and he was a, a, a person who feared, the God, who feared God. But he did not, he was seeking God, but he did not know who the true God was. And what happened? The angel of the Lord visited him and said, send for this man called Peter in Joppa. And, uh, you know, he sent two of his servants and one of his faithful soldiers to Joppa. And while they were going to Joppa, the next day, Peter, uh, you know, was in a trance and he saw this vision where he saw all these animals, four-legged, creeping, and birds. He saw all kinds of animals. And the Lord told him, rise, kill, and eat. What it meant was, you know, the gospel is for everybody. It's not only for the Jews, it's for the Gentiles also. And Peter said, that, you know, Peter's reaction was that uh, he, he did not eat anything which was common or unclean. But the voice told him three times that, you know, you need to rise, kill and eat. And this was done three times, it says. Uh, th sorry, the Lord said, what God has cleaned, you must not uh, call common. So what God has cleaned, this happened three times to him. He heard it three times. And, he f so, and that is the time, you know, what happened when, you know, Peter was ready, that's why, to go. And when his servant and the soldiers came to go and visit um, Cornelius in uh, Caesarea. So when the two servants came, when Peter went uh, to Caesarea and Cornelius' house, many of them who gathered, there were many people who were gathered there. Cornelius told Peter what happened, that in the angel of Lord visited him. And as he was seeking God, he was seeking the true God. And they told him to go and get for him. So what Peter did, we're not going to read this, but from Acts 10, 30, uh, uh, Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43, Peter started preaching the gospel again, like the day of Pentecost. He got up and started preaching the gospel about Jesus Christ. And we can see in Acts chapter 10, verse 44 to 46, what happened. It says, and those of circumcision who believed were astonished as many as, as they, as many as, came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. For they heard them speak in tongues and magnify God. So the falling of the Holy Spirit led to the Gentiles being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And as they started speaking in tongues, they received the Lord and they were saved. So you see, the falling of the uh, Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit coming and the presence of the Holy Spirit was instrumental in opening the eyes of Peter and Jew, the Jews, that the gospel is not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. And praise God for that. Because of that, we are all here today. You know, 
if that event didn't happen, we don't know what would have happened. So we want to thank God for that event that, you know, Cornelius was a faithful man. He was, the door was open there and, and God was faithful. Like promised, he sent the Holy Spirit. They started receiving and speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit played a very important role because we see in both the incidents, both on the day of Pentecost and we see in, in the case of uh, Cornelius, Peter spoke the word of God. He shared the gospel and the Holy Spirit came and did his work. So I want to challenge you as a church. We must believe when we share the gospel, the Holy Spirit will come and convict. It's the Holy Spirit's job. It is not our job to push. Our job is to preach the gospel. Peter never pushed. Peter only preached the gospel. He preached the truth and the Holy Spirit who's faithful, who's more faithful than even we can think about will come and convict the person. We have so many wonderful testimonies about this happening, you know, and he will convict and he will turn people around. So I believe that and that should be our lifestyle. So if any one of you is praying for your friends, relatives, and uh, you know, anyone you know at work, we need to preach the truth and unadulterated truth and believe the Holy Spirit will go and convict that person and touch that person and change the eternal destiny of that person. Hallelujah. That is important to know the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so, so, so you know what our prayer should be? Uh, you know, and Lord clearly told me that, say, this is what our prayer should be. You know, when we're praying for that person, we've shared the gospel, we believe that. Our prayer should be, should be, Lord, I have sown the gospel in his heart. I thank you that you are going to convict him, his heart or her heart, and make, and make them realize in their heart the need for Jesus in their life. And that should be our prayer. We shouldn't be asking God to save him because God, once we say it, God hears it more than us. We should just be thanking him. Thank you, Lord. I've sown the seed. Now, Holy Spirit, you're going to convict him and thank God. It's a wonderful, you know, the first time when I was preparing this uh, uh, sermon, Lord spoke that to me. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to type it what God told me. And that is going to be our, I request each one of you to have that attitude and pray that prayer. What happens is when we start preaching the gospel as a church, as we start sharing with every person who's walking in this world, because every person who walks in this world deserves to hear the gospel. That's what pastor says. Every person deserves to hear the truth because the eternal destiny of each person we know is in our hands. You know, it's in our hands. It's, it's powerful when you realize that it changes things in your life. So what happens? We start fil fulfilling the Great Commission. And what happens? It becomes a part of our purpose. I understand the purpose when I start fil fulfilling the Great Commission. What is the Great Commission? You know, Jesus' one of Jesus' last command was the Great Commission. You know, in Matthew 20, uh, chapter 28, verse 9, 19 to 20, he says to the disciples, he says, go for Therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father in the, uh, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. Till the end of the age. Amen. So here Jesus explains to the disciples, once he's resurrected, the purpose of their lives. And how, without Jesus, they are going to continue his ministry and the vision of the Father. Now, what is the vision of the Father? It's 2 Peter 3, 9. He says, none should perish, but everyone should come to the knowledge and repentance of the Lord. That is the vision of the Father. You know, we talk about our visions, we talk about, but Father has a very simple vision that he wants every church, a child of his, to be connected back to him. That eternity. For eternity, we can live with him. That's the vision. And that's how Jesus' ministry was extended by the disciples. So we need to understand. So the Holy Spirit, like I said, plays a very important pivotal role, you know, because that's why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. He said, it's better for me in, in, in John 16. He says, it's better for me to go. And I send the helper because he will teach you all things. And he will convict the world of not believing in Jesus. That's the conviction. You know, when I sin or when I do something, the Holy Spirit tells me, why didn't you rely on Jesus? 
He doesn't say, oh, you've done something wrong. You've done. He says, why didn't you rely on Jesus? Jesus is everything. You don't need that. Jesus satisfies you all the way. And that is what the conviction of people are who are not believing. Holy Spirit says, you need to rely on Jesus. This Jesus died for you. He's your savior. You know, because what happens? Once we receive the Holy Spirit, you know, how we fulfill the Great Commission. Once we receive the Holy Spirit, we're baptized with the Holy Spirit. What happens? One of the signs is speaking in tongues. The second is we become his witness. You know, so a lot of people may not speak in tongues, but if you're witnessing, and like Pastor said, there could be certain reasons why you're not speaking in tongues. Maybe what you've taught, been taught, or a mind block, or already you've been given the gifts, but you don't know, but you're already baptized, but you think you're not baptized because you're not speaking. But if you're sharing the gospel, you're his witness, then you're already baptized. That's what it says. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says, but you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, all in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So I believe that, you know, we have already been in the, given this gift. We've been baptized with the Holy Spirit and it's in our heart that we really want to share the gospel. You know, because the Holy Spirit is continuously prompting us to share the gospel. And what happens? That means we are baptized. Okay, speaking in tongues is very important. It changes your prayer life. It changes everything in your life. And it's one of the most important things. But if you're sharing the gospel, if you're becoming a witness, then you're already fulfilling the great commission. You've already found your purpose. You're already been baptized by the Holy Spirit. So we must be a witness. I'm going to quickly share, you know, when I got baptized by the Holy Spirit and it's a very uh, amazing story I got uh, uh, baptized by the Holy Spirit at 5 30 in the morning I used to work in the call center so somebody prayed we were all gathering for a church uh, skit at 5 30 because all call center workers we had to prepare for some skit and I got they started praying for me and I fa felt the presence of God and I started speaking in a different tongue immediately and the first thing we wanted to do is go out and preach the gospel so after 9 30 to 1 30 we were in Huda, that is in sector 56 market, preaching God the gospel. Because the power of God, I felt the power of God that day. And I was just, till like four hours, we were just preaching the gospel to people. You know, and it was quiet. And after that also, you know, at my work, at everywhere I went, I just preached the gospel. I nearly got fired because of that also, because of conversion. But uh, that is okay. God saved me from that situation. Uh, I had a leadership meeting with uh, this company, top uh, training company, where I was prof prophesying over people that they will have babies and after nine months they were having babies. It's just the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, I just spoke it. You know, my boss, she was not having a baby. I said, after nine months you'll have a baby. She started crying. She complained, but after nine months she had a baby and st till today she says, thank you, because you know, they were trying for a long time. So, you know, I, but it's the Holy Spirit, it's not me. I know my capabilities. I know who I am. So similarly, I want to encourage each one of you, share the word. You're the Holy Spirit's jo your job is to share the gospel. That's the Holy Spirit's job to convict that person. Don't do the Holy Spirit's job. You know, he's good at his job. Right? So I, I just want to tell you that, that we have been called with a purpose. We have a chance to change the eternal destiny of so many people. You know, and they will thank you for eternity. Here we may give something, they may thank us and talk for 10 years. But when they, we change the eternal destiny of a person for eternity, when we are there with them, they will be thanking us. Praise God. So remember as a church, we have the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the power to change the eternal destiny of so many people. You know, and that what happens because of that? Soul winning becomes a my lifestyle. Winning souls becomes my lifestyle. You know, we see, we see, uh, you know, we, we see, why? Because the Holy Spirit puts a burden in our hearts. You know, he, he puts a compassion for people. I've seen that, you know, I've seen that with, you know, Pastor Victor, I've seen that with so many people in our church. They have so much a burden for people. Why? It's, it's the Holy Spirit who's put that compassion, who wants, you know, looking at every opportunity to tell them the good news, not to convert them 
but to tell them and bring them into in relationship with Jesus introduce Jesus to them that's a job we just have to introduce Jesus and what he's done and pray for that and believe the Holy Spirit will touch them that happened to me you know people somebody shared the gospel and at, at the right time I received the gospel so soul winning becomes a lifestyle so you know uh, I'm going to look at sec because Paul I love the way Paul puts it he says we are now in the business of reconciliation our ministry is part of reconciling what is reconciling reconciling see Jesus has reconciled man and God because he was 100% man so he understood 100 man he was 100% God so that was required to reconcile with the father we needed a man who's perfect in the image of God and God himself and we had a we had God and they, we were reconciled and Paul puts it beautifully in 2 Corinthians 18 to, uh, chapter 5, 18 to 19. But we're going to read from 17 because that's my favorite verse, one of my favorite verses. So it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed. The new has come. And all this from God, all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Why? That is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself and not counting their trust, trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So we have the message of reconciliation. We have a ch message of changing people's destiny, of reconciling them back to the original design that the Father had. Hallelujah. We have so much of power. We need to know that because the Holy Spirit is with us. We are not just normal people. We are, we belong to the family of the King of Kings. He's our brother, Jesus. We, you know, we are blood related to him. We are not normal people. We can look at normal people because we look at ourselves. You know, we can, when we look at ourselves, we look at normal, as we, we are normal people, but we are not. In the spirit, we are not. Let me tell you, we are part of the royal priesthood. We are part of the royal priest. That is who we are. So I want to encourage you. We have been given a ministry. Ministry means to serve. To reconcile people. Reconcile means to join them. I know there's a reconcile account. My wife does it. So I, it, that's not the same thing. That's balancing it out. But another definition of reconcile is to you know, join people. Build their relationship back. That's what we are doing. That's what our, each one of us purpose. You know, people say, I don't know what my purpose is. I'm asking God. That's your purpose. Great commission. That's your purpose. That is it. If you don't need any other purpose from God, if you don't have any other purpose, say, thank you, Lord. This is what my purpose is. I am going to preach and disciple people and bring them to your kingdom. I want to end by sharing a small story. And when I read this story, it really encouraged me. So please bear with me. This is a, fa a wonderful, true story um, about a man. And it's, it's quite amazing because I know you're going to do a research about this man after I talk, tell you about this man. Some of you must have heard about him. But, uh, you know, the first time I heard it, it just encouraged me. And while I was preparing, I said, Lord, you know, I said, I want to give an example of a, live, a person living to win souls, a lifestyle. And uh, Lord told me, I felt like the Holy Spirit telling me, talk about this guy. And it's about a person in Australia old man who was in George Street you know George Street is like cyber hub here cyber hub all of you from Gurgaon you know cyber hub or CP so it is one of the main areas in Sydney and this old man it's a story about him so I'm going to start by telling you several testimonies there are m many testimonies about this man okay but I'm going to just tell you several so what happened was in a meeting in Crystal Palace that's in the United Kingdom uh, uh, you know, after a, a church service, a man came to the pastor and said, can I share my testimony? Uh, the, ma uh, the pastor said, you have three minutes. So, so the man got up and he said, he said that, you know, he'd moved uh, to Crystal Palace from, from, from Australia a couple of months back. And uh, how, when he was in uh, Sydney and one day he was walking in the streets of, uh, you know, George Street, this man, like uh, old man came to him and said, hey, I want to talk to you. 
And uh, so uh, this man said, okay, tell me. He says, if you die today, will you be in heaven or hell? Do you know that? And uh, this man, what he said was that this really challenged him. He didn't answer the question, but he went away. But this question really challenged him and he really disturbed him. So he had a Christian friend, so he called the Christian friend. And the Christian friend shared the gospel, what he meant by that. And this man accepted the gospel. So he shared the, this, this testimony. Now the pastor who was there, who said, I'm going to give you three minutes. Two weeks later, wa uh, was in Adelaide from Crystal Palace. He went to Adelaide for a seminar. And after you know teaching in the seminar, this uh, lady came up to him and said, I want some time. So the, this pastor said, OK, I'll give you time, but I want to know how you got saved. She said that uh, you know, uh, I'd gone to uh, Sydney, and I was walking in George Street. And this white man came and gave me a tract and asked me whether I am, you know, I, will I go to heaven or hell? And uh, this, this challenged me because I didn't know. So when I came back to Adelaide, across my street, there's a church. And I went and met the pastor. And he, he, taught me, he told, me the, uh, told me about salvation. And I accepted Jesus. So, you know, now this person, this pastor, whose name is Francis Down, in the 1950s, this was around 40s and 1950s, was really challenged because it, within two weeks in two different continents, he heard the same t about the same person, you know, and uh, so he was really, you know, he was okay, fine. That he was. So what happened? This pastor went to uh, Perth, and uh, he had another seminar there. After preaching in the seminar, the elder of the church took him out for dinner, and uh, they were just talking. And this person, who was an elder, who was a very influential man, and he was very rich, so he asked him that, uh, you know, hey, uh, how did you get saved? He said, you know, one of my business trips, I went to Sydney. And uh, he said that, you know, I was saved from the year 15, but never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. But, uh, you know, I was an elder of the church also. And I was walking in uh, George Street. And what happened was this old white man came and he handed me a track and said, if you get saved today, uh, will you go to heaven or hell? And he said, I'll go to heaven because I've been saved. And this man, uh, he said, I don't think so. You'll need to talk to your pastor. And he went to his pastor and his pastor was saying, his pastor agreed with that old man. He said, you've been in church, you're an elder, but I've been worried, really worried about your relationship with Jesus. Because, and, and I agree with that man. So that moment he accepted Jesus. Now there are three, four other stories which are similar across. The pastor went for a convention in Northwestern um, UK and he shared these four testimonies three testimonies. After the service, four elderly pastors came and said, we also got saved by that man in St. George Street. So this is already five or six stories. And then following week, he went for a convention in the Caribbean island for a missionary trip. So he shared the same testimony. And three ladies came and said that we got saved in Australia. And uh, you know, this man came and told us whether we're going to heaven or hell. He was not preaching the gospel like Peter. He just asked. And they said, we got saved last 15 or 20 years ago. And on the way to back, he was in Atlanta in the US. And he was in a Navy base uh, ministering to chaplains. And he, the head chaplain took him. And, uh, and again, in the conversation came up that he was in Australia serving the Navy. And their base was there in the Pacific Ocean. They were doing some testing. And he had gone to Sydney. He got drunk. And uh, he had to go to some other street, but he took a wrong bus and got down in uh, you know, George Street. And this old man came and said the same thing. So this pastor was shocked. Within one month, he had had so many stories about this man. And it's not by coincidence. What I'm trying to do is tell you, this man never preached the gospel. He just asked a simple question. Are you going to heaven or hell? He just sowed the seed. Is that easy? You know, name of the person is Frank Jenner. You can find it in the internet. There are many more stories, but I'll share one more because it's closer to home. In northwestern India, northeastern India, he had come for a. This pastor had come for a, uh, you know, had come for a meeting, missionary meeting, and uh, so he asked. Uh, you know, the elder was there with him. The elder took him 
to his house for dinner after the service and he stayed with the elder. So he asked the elder, how did you get to know? He says that, you know, I worked for the Indian diplomatic, so I used to travel all around the world. And I, I belong to a different faith. So one day I was walking, shopping in George Street and this old man came and said, are you saved? Will you go to heaven or hell if you're saved? He said, that disturbed me. When I came back to India, I asked my local priest. He said, go to that church and they may be able to help you. And he went there and he got saved. So, so this pastor, uh, Francis Down, went and met Frank Jenner in 1952. And he told him about this, this, these incidences. And you know what? Frank Jenner said, I don't know any about them, about any of their testimonies. You're the first person who told me about so many. There are many more testimonies I can't share, but you know, you read it, it's so exciting, so encouraging. The only thing he said, if you get, if you die today, will you be saved? Or, or will you be going to heaven or hell? And it challenged the people. Why? That in the inquisitiveness, the Holy Spirit doing its job and challenging them. What is the truth? And they said, estimated, uh, is written, that this person impacted close to 146,000 people by just sharing those two words. 140. Imagine the person is with Jesus today. What a welcome that the person must have received. So I want to challenge you as a church. We need to renew our mind like the first, the, you know, the church that was from the day of Pentecost. As a church which believes in the power of the Holy Spirit, who believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we need to be the church. We need to replicate that church we can teach the gospel in a simple way like brother Frank Jenner did or we can just introduce people to Jesus that's our job that's our purpose that's fulfilling the Great Commission and that is becomes you know that becomes a lifestyle of soul winning so I want to challenge each one of you today and in, including me you know over the years I've also become very it becomes so easy to forget what the purpose is. We have so many people's responsibilities of changing the destiny. We have so much chance of changing so many people's destiny for eternity. And let's not let it get away and rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will do their job. So I want to thank uh, everyone for listening. I hope it encouraged you as it encouraged me talking about it. And thank you and God bless you, everyone.